Hey everyone, I uh, hope you're well. I'm Ben Rolo and today I'm going to take you through my track Begin Again. This one has just come out on program as part of my Dreamers Dilemma EP. So before we get started, a huge thank you to the RAM team for all the support on this one. Uh, so this one was made a few years ago now, so maybe take some of the techniques with a pinch of salt and we'll laugh together at my dodgy mixing. Uh, Broomhill really made these masters sound brilliant, so I can't thank them enough. Anyway, yeah, let's get on with it. So before we go any further, uh, in case you haven't heard it, I'll play a quick uh, 10 seconds. So you get the general idea. As you can see, uh, my kind of door of choice is Ableton. For me, it's the most intuitive, but you know, they all sound the same. A lot of my processing you'll actually realize comes from my sends down here. So I'll spend a quick couple of minutes going through them just so you can kind of see the processing there. First of all, I have my room reverb on send A. What I've done is just cut out a load of the sub um, and low mids, made sure the linear phase mode was on just so we didn't get any phasing later on with these harsh cuts. And yeah, as you can see, it's just a basic room reverb, um, which I use a lot on the snare and stuff like that, really. Um, on send B here, it's basically the same premise, really. So we're cutting out the low end with this EQ here, uh, making sure linear phase is on again. And yeah, this is just for my effects, really. So yeah, a lot of the vocals will go through this, up my risers, um, hits and so on. On send C here, we have just the fab filter C2 with quite um, harsh settings. Uh, this is one of two parallel compression uh, sends for me. On D, we have the Ableton stock uh, saturator with the soft clipper turned on. Uh, probably up there, my top favorite couple of plugins this. On E, we have a bit of the Sound Toys micro shift. If you uh, don't know what this is, this is just a stereo width plugin, I think based on an old analog model, but don't quote me on that. F, we have some delay and the compressor. I don't really know what that's doing, but you know, we'll ignore that. Uh, yeah, so just a delay, mainly for my vocals, as it says here. Here we have the SSL um, G Master Bus compressor. This is from Waves and um, I mainly use it myself for kind of the parallel compression. Again, um, I drive a lot of my kicks and basses through here, as you will uh, probably see throughout. And on H, this is the Sound Toys Decapitator. And yeah, it's just fantastic. If you haven't got the Sound Toys stuff, I highly recommend it all. So uh, moving on to the drums here. So yeah, as you can see on the drum group, we'll just get that out of the way. There's nothing really on it. This is just a filter to filter out the ends of sections just for that kind of smoother transition. And onto the kick, um, it's quite a lot of parallel compression you can see going on here. I don't know really what I'm thinking, probably squeezed the life out of it, but luckily it sounds all right, so it must have worked. And on this one, I don't really use it too often now. We've got the TR5 uh, Clipper, which I think I picked up for free or very cheap. And yeah, no, that's excellent for all of that kind of stuff. Um, as you can see, just cut off the um, tail end of the kick here to stop the kind of flabbiness coming through. But yeah, that's about it for the kick. So I usually like to go a bit more in depth on my snares um, compared to the kicks. So. I'll kind of explain the process, but I don't want to go too much into all this because there's a, there's tons of tutorials who can show this kind of technique better than I can. Um, so I think Artifacts is one of those. Um, so yeah, you'll I'll have to show you what I'm on about first. Um, so this is how I start my snare drums and normally most of my drums as well. Uh, so this is just a synthesized snare on Serum. Oh, basically going through this oscillator and this is controlling your kind of float of the snare etc again loads more videos that can explain this way better than me but yeah so the main premise for this is that i'll make sure it's in the key of my song i think this one is in f sharp minor or the relative is a major so it's, yeah it's one of those 
And I will play this on a loop while I'm trying to make my snare. And I'll go through my sample library and just uh, pick up some snares, uh, put them into my drum rack and just see if they fit really. And yeah, usually this is a good way to make your snares sound a bit more organic. I feel um, just a serum snare sounds quite neuro-y, especially for liquid. It's probably not ideal. But yeah, I'll play that through and you can hear what they sound like all together. Processing wise, I've just um, kind of cut off the end to make sure we're not getting that whole reverb of the snare. And it's all quite tight like you really want it in drum and bass. So as you can see, a lot of my processing for the snares comes through the sends here. Um, mostly saturation to kind of tame the peaks and gel all of the layers together. On this one here, I've added a little bit of room reverb. And onto the breaks. It's the same kind of premise for me with the breaks. Um, now I've got all those kind of snare hits sounding quite nice uh, together. I will kind of find... Um, a break or two to complement it don't quote me on this one but this is a real funky amen i think this is the one i started the drums with uh, i'll just play that through so you can hear it on its own my approach to breaks really is to then kind of fill the other frequencies that i feel uh, my main break has left so that's exactly what I've done here. As you can see, I've used, what, five breaks and a load of percussion loops cut up as well. Most of the processing, again, is coming from my sends in regards to saturation and distortion. I think I've gone a bit more into the breaks on the EQs here than I usually would um, nowadays. But yeah, as you can see, not a whole lot going on. I'm just kind of cutting the low, mid and the sub, and this one here is cutting some of the side frequencies I probably felt were a bit harsh or something like that. So I just play through a few of these uh, alternative drum loops just so you can kind of hear that they're following the same rhythm and they're filling the frequencies left by this uh, real funky Amen break. So yeah, all together you can hear, you kind of get that, um, the rolling liquid feel you really want. And it's the same with the percussion, really the same premise, just looking for loops that complement each other and don't kind of contradict your rhythm in the drums. And that's basically it for my drums, for this one anyway. Maybe not the best mix in the world, probably a few dodgy decisions. But it worked, and yeah, that's all that matters, really. Um, I'll play them all through together just so you can hear what they all sound like. Okay, so moving on. Uh, next, I usually have my effects in the project. Uh, this one is really simple. This LFO basically is um, rising this noise generator along with a tiny amount of these oscillators too. Um, I'll just quickly play that so you can hear it just about. So yeah, you might be able to just about hear that, but that's kind of essential to create the tension before your drop. Same kind of thing here. This is just white noise samples to really hit home the drop um, and the same with the crashes here too. Processing wise, if you can see just a lot, lot of reverb and some saturation on the FX as well. So next up we have the bass. Again, made in Serum and all we've got is the main oscillator here, rounded saw edge, um, kind of got that deep quality with a Reese on top just to give you that little grit. What I've done down here is made my sub bass, which is this first one here, fully mono. So you obviously don't want a stereo bass because it won't translate well on your big systems. And instead of side chaining on this one, I've used the Towel Filter 2, which is a free plugin. So definitely have a look at that one if you haven't got it yet. 
Uh, what this is doing is just tipping the base every time it hits, basically. So just your same premise as side chaining. And if you're wondering why I have my base in two, um, maybe these days I will usually cut the kind of high end on the sub, but for some reason I haven't chosen to on this one. But yeah, for this, this is just to target the mid layer and to get your bass to come through on small speakers. So what I've done is just, uh, again, cut the sub, cut a bit of the low mids, got the linear phase mode on to stop phasing issues. And I've just driven it through my parallel compression and saturation sends and added a nice bit of distortion with the sound toys radiator as well. So I'll play that all through for you. Yeah, so as you can hear, just very simple, your nice kind of rolling Reese liquid bass. I don't think with liquid you need to worry too much about the technicals in some aspects, uh, especially, well, for me, I'm hoping that musicality shines through instead of the mixing and the sound design because that's not really my forte. I wish it was. But yeah, that's where hopefully this uh, section will be a bit more interesting. So this is my instrument section. And I think the main idea originated from these piano chords here or it was either this guitar here anyway i'll start with the um main piano first how i write this is usually a mixture really i think this one was through my ableton push 2 So you uh, get the general idea. Um, this one was made on a plugin, Notorious in Liquid. Um, this is Spitfire Audio's Felt Piano. And yeah, for me, it's one of the best pianos I've used personally. Um, it's quite a mainstay in a lot of my songs. You'll probably hear it um, if you know more of my catalog. Um, but yeah, definitely check them out. I think it's quite cheap, 30 quid. So well worth the bang for the buck. Processing wise, we've got again, all the sub taken off and a little notch here on 3K. Sound toys crystallizer, which is a bit of a delay, uh, kind of filtered delay gate kind of plugin, really interesting, just to add a little bit of movement as well. Also, again, we've got the decapitator and the radiator, I think just to tame the peaks, maybe to get it to sit a bit nicer and a slight bit of delay as well to really add to the airy ethereal feel I was going for for this song. A technique I quite like to use um, to make my pianos a bit thicker and to me a bit more real, uh, a bit less midi, is to layer them. I tend to like to layer with this uh, contact instrument. This is Scarby Mark 1. I. I think you get it in a lot of the kind of completes and stuff like that really. But yeah, I think it adds that really nice bit of texture to the main piano. Uh, again, this seems a common theme in this mix, just to get rid of the sub completely. It might not be so um, so hasty with that these days, but seem to work. I've also got another layer here following the MIDI. This is the Isotope Iris 2, probably one of my favourite um, synths for your kind of more organic pads. Processing wise, but compression, the tremolator, surprisingly. But um, yeah, let's play those all together and hopefully you'll be able to hear the little subtle differences it kind of makes to the main riff. Next up, as we are on the piano section, it makes sense to go to the main piano lead here. Um, this is probably the main melody you hear throughout Begin Again. This one here is another notorious plugin in our Liquid Producers arsenal. Um, this is the Soft Piano by Spitfire Audio again from Labs. Um, if you haven't got it yet, go pick it up. Labs is all free and excellent. Let me just play the main riff through for you so you can hear what it's doing.
Cool. So as you could probably hear if you've heard the song, that's the kind of key hook. Processing wise, again, Santos Radiator, Crystallizer, bit of delay again for that F roll fill. Don't know what I've done here. So yeah, some quite harsh cuts. Um, so yeah, maybe one I wouldn't do so much of now. And a bit of compression to gel it all together. Um, becoming a bit of a common theme of this mix is the Spitfire instruments. This is another one. This is the BBC Symphony Orchestra. And this is playing this. So as you can hear, that's just adding to the pad layer and atmosphere throughout the drop. Um, brilliant instrument for organic sounding strings, so another one to definitely have a look at. Now let's uh, have a look at one of the ideas, it was either this or the piano that started this whole song off. Yeah, this is, again, probably bored of me saying it now, the Labs uh, series, and this is the Pill guitar from that instrument. What I tend to like to do when I'm recording guitars is to write in the MIDI and then play over the top. I've done that on other songs off the EP, so you will hear that on Dreamer's Dilemma. But for some reason, I think just because it fits so well and it was pointless to re-recording it, I uh, left this one alone just for the, the main kind of driving riff in the second half of the drop. Um, let me play that through for you. put a few more plugins in than I usually would. Um, added another bit of reverb, surprisingly. I probably th felt that it needed more depth and something slightly different. Again, uh, the radiator to gel it together, a bit of compression as well, and the crystallizer too. Um, yeah, so nothing too different there. And another instrument I can't seem to go a song without using is the uh, central saxophone here, which is a great name. This one is kind of following strings in a way. It's really kind of making that big atmosphere. Yeah, the processing wise, not much. Probably just cut off the low end. Yeah, there we go. Um, very standard for this mix, it seems. And added a delay as well. And on the sense here, we've got a bit of reverb and stuff like that and some saturation to gel it together. Uh, that sounds like this. So that one, again, was made on Isotope's Iris synth, um, as you can see there. Um, what I've done to get this arpeggiator effect is, funnily enough, use the arpeggiator um, from Ableton, which is brilliant for making all that kind of stuff. And a uh, common theme here, I'm adding the crystallizer, but distortion again. Added the pan man, which is an interesting decision and plugin. Um, yeah, just to get a bit of stereo whip by the look of it and get a bit of movement. But yeah, that kind of sounds like this in the full tune, and I think it really adds a little bit of ear candy. <laughs> So coming to the end of the song now, um, after all this kind of all the musical bits, um, at one point I did um, consider getting a vocalist on, but I thought it'd make the song a bit too busy and it wasn't quite right for a full vocal performance. So this made me look down the kind of acapella route and I found two acapellas and um, two phrases from that acapella stuck out to me and yeah, luckily formed the kind of lead line of the song. In a dream again, Uh, first of all, I'll show you the processing on this main vocal, and it's quite similar on this uh, second vocal channel as well. So what I've done here, let's show you this plugin. This is the Little Alter Boy by Sound Toys. Um, basically, it just pitches the um, foreman, or if you want the whole pitch, uh, down. So 
originally. Let's play the main vocal with that off. So that to me is much more sweet and didn't quite fit the vibe as much. So this is it with it on. So you can really hear what it's doing to that there. Hopefully it fits a lot nicer. Processing wise, we've cut the lows again, boosted the 3K. Uh, got some saturation, some um, compression as well to glue it all together. But what we've done on this one is added another reverb. Again, a technique I probably wouldn't use too much, adding individual reverbs. You probably want to use a couple for the whole mix, but... For this, I guess I felt the ooze needed a bit more present, so let's just listen to that. So one last little tip before I sign off is how to get your vocals to stand out when you've got a kind of dense instrumental mix. Um, obviously, we've got a lot going on here in the instrument section. So what I like to use for that is the Neutron 2 right here. Um, I think all Neutrons have it above too, so can use whatever well it has this really nice masking feature on the equalizer section and what you can do is put a neutron on your main vocal channel so i've got one here as you can see i was showing you the frequencies that will be masked. So what I've done is clicked on those, as you can see here, and clicked on the dynamic mode. So um, it's a bit like side chaining. I know a few plugins do this also, but this is the one that works for me. Uh, so when you click on a dynamic mode and you bring the threshold uh, down a little bit, it will um, kind of dip the uh, instruments out and let your vocals stand out a bit more. So I feel that's a trick that really helped them kind of fit together in this kind of dense instrumental mix. So all together, I'll give you one last little play so you can kind of hear what I've been waffling on about for the past 20 minutes or so. So thank you so much for sticking around if you made it this far. Um, I really hope that was of some use to you. Um, please let me know in the comments below if it was. I'd love to hear it. Once again, a big thank you to the Ram team for having me on and getting me involved. I uh, really appreciate it. And I hope this was of some use to you. Um, until the next time.